This is no ordinary home solo Bitcoin miner. This is the Nerd QX++ from the team over at plebsource.com, coming in at a whopping 4.5 terahash. But how far can we push this thing? How far can we overclock it? Let's find out today. All right, so let's take a look at the Nerd QX++ from the team over at Plebsource. Lots of bubble wrap which I love to see. All right, here we go. Check this out. Got the pink wrapping here. Let's get this opened up. Man, this got some weight to it. Ooh, oh man, look at this. This looks awesome. All right, let me move this aside here. Let's take a closer look. So like, as I said, this definitely has some weight to it. So we have our screen right up here, actually has a little bit of plastic, you ready? Let's do it together. Oh yeah, oh yeah, love to see it. Okay, so we have our screen and there's not a lot to this, honestly. What we're seeing here, the cable is actually directly for the heat sink uh, and for the actual cooler for the fan on top of there. This is actually a thermal right fan, which is pretty sweet. This is actually pretty high, like, all things aside, this is actually really, really nice. So you can kind of see down in here, uh, you can see the layout with the chip in there. This is the back side here, and there's not much to it. I mean, the entire community around a lot of these bit axes, or now the nerd Q axe, it's very much this tinkerer world where everybody kind of 3D prints and builds out these really cool cooling systems and layouts and fun stuff to it. So this is really nice. As I said, there's not much to this. You could literally just put a little screw in and hang this somewhere, um, or you could go ahead and put this as a display piece somewhere. Now, something else to take a look at here is actually the power plug for this. You're not gonna see ethernet on here. This is gonna be set up via wireless. So I'm gonna go through getting that set up off camera uh, and getting that configured on my pool. Today, we're going to be solo mining with this Nerd Q Axe Plus Plus directly to the Brains solo pool. I have a lot of my miners over there and uh, it's been running great, great stability and never really going down for me. Now, talking about the power supply here, it doesn't come with a power supply. And I've been told from the team over at Plebsource, this is because some of the current tariff issues with China. So what I have here, I'll put this off to the side, is I did get their recommendations for a power supply from Amazon, big boy here. And this is what they recommended. So we do have our traditional uh, NEMA 515 plug on here, and it's gonna plug directly into this power supply. Sorry, the plastic's really loud opening this up. All right, so check it out. It actually comes with, that's what fell out of here, this weird little adapter. Uh, but what we'll do is we'll go ahead and plug directly into there, and then we'll have the brick and we'll plug directly into the unit here. And this will get us off and running, which is awesome. Love to see it. So the Nerd QX++ that we have here, you know, this is kind of like the big brother. Previously, we did a video on the Plebsource Bidax 601 Gamma here, and this is kind of like the little brother. You know, this is kind of like your introduction into solo Bitcoin mining from home. Comes in about 1.2 terahash, nothing crazy. But this guy here, you know, this is kind of your big brother, coming in at 4.5 terahash. And well, wait, what's that? Oh, hello. So, we have two. So what does that mean? That means we're giving this one away. That's right. We're going to give away this other Nerd Q Axe Plus Plus to one of you guys. What do you think? Would you like one of these? So I'm going to go ahead and give away that unit in two weeks to one lucky winner. And well, how do you enter? Well, let me know where you would put this if you won. Would you put it in somewhere like here, put it up on a shelf somewhere, you know, with a lot of your other items, which you put it out in a garage, in a basement, where on your desk, where would you put the Nerd Q Axe Plus Plus from the team over at Plebsource? Let me know, comment down below. In two weeks, we'll pick one winner and I'll cover all the shipping. So back to what we got going on here. Here's what I'm gonna do. 
I'm going to go ahead and get this plugged in and I'm going to get this set up and configured. And it's pretty simple and easy. If you guys have seen my video here on the Bitaxe, I'll link it down below. You plug it in, connect to an ad hoc wireless that it gives off. You get access to the dashboard. You configure your pool and the wireless and off you go. And it's even got this cool little screen here to give you all the details. So let me go ahead and get that plugged in and set up because I want to see how well it does and are we getting 4.5 terahash and at how many watts. All right, check it out. We actually used, I had some motherboard stands uh, and actually just rested those there. It could fall over any second. They're not super secure, but it works for today's video. But wanted to show you guys we're plugged in and actually take a look at the screen here. Try to get in here and let me fix the focus a little bit. Check that out. Tells you go ahead and connect to the wireless Nerd Axe 279D. So I'm gonna grab my cell phone here. I'm gonna have two things I'm gonna to wanna to have on my cell phone kind of in my clipboard. My Bitcoin wallet address as well as the solo pool that I do wanna go ahead and mine to. And right now idle just sitting here we're using about 15 watts. All right, let me get this set up. I'll be right back. All right, we've been up and mining for about 12 minutes now, and look at this. We are at five terahash with this thing. Absolutely wild. Bottom right, 15.4 is the watt to terahash ratio. Look at this screen. Let me fix the focus. So many really cool stats on here. Temperature, we have RPMs on the fan. We have metrics on the right-hand side. It says about 78 watts, but let's take a look at the wall here. We're at 88. Yeah, 88 watts currently right now. So it's about 10 watts off, but this is still, like, this screen is pretty badass and pretty slick. Now, taking a look over on the phone, as I said, we've been up for about 12 minutes. We are on the dashboard itself. The IP address matches the IP address. You might be able to see it at the very, very top of this screen. You can kind of see it does give you the IP address which is great and lots of really good metrics down here. Now what we can do is if we go ahead and over on the actual settings screen, you know, this is where you have your pool information and all, but if we scroll down, this is actually what I wanna play with a little bit today. So the shutdown temperature is 70. So we have plenty of headroom over here at 39C. Now for frequency, the frequency is actually all the way up at the default at 600. So you can, kind of down clock that frequency if we're interested. But what I'm interested in for science, right, is we're at 1150 for our core voltage. How far do you guys think we can push this thing? I'm thinking we just go ahead and push it all the way up to 1200. And uh, let's see what happens. Because if we can get it really far, I have a fun idea. All right, we've been up and running for almost 15 minutes here. We're not really seeing a lot out of the hash rate, 4.9, and our watts have increased by about 10 to 97. So what do we do now? Well, here's my idea. Here's what I wanna do. So you see there's a little button right here in the upper right-hand corner. They call this the danger zone. This lets you go ahead and configure things manually. So we're gonna have some fun with this. Let me show you what idea I have. All right, so I've gone ahead and removed the bracket and the fan, and this is kind of what you're left with all said and done. Let's take this out to my shed. All right, so let's head out to our crypto mining shed here, and uh, let's take a little look. So let's head inside, and I'll show you what idea I have. All right, so I'm in my crypto mining shed, let me zoom out here a little bit. There we go. If you guys haven't been in the shed with me before, uh, this is kind of my home crypto mining shed. We got all different types of fun stuff going on in here. Give you guys a little swing tour real quick. We got lots of goodies. All right, so let's talk about the idea that I have. So here's our Nerdax Q++ hanging out. Let's go on the other side, because here's what I'm thinking. How far can we push this unit? We're going to use our fog hashing home C2 immersion kit. And if you guys aren't familiar, we have two S19 J Pro 100 terahash units in here that are on Brains OS. They're cranked down to about 
1900 watts total and they've been in immersion for a few years now and here is our immersion pump and what I'm thinking I'm thinking can I find a spot in here that I could fit this unit it's not very big plug it in and then run the power you know here's the power here and run it inside and I got my watt meter for some testing and so I'm curious especially with the ability to kind of customize overclocking how far can we push this thing is the limitation going to be the chip is it going to be the cooling is it going to be the power supply so uh, let's go ahead and uh, get this in immersion. All right, call me crazy, but we did it. We have it sitting, look at this, sitting right in the oil. Uh, I went ahead and took the power cable through a little grommet hole there. Kind of sat it right on top of the power supply here for now, kind of like a little quasi shelf to kind of keep it there and out of the way. But let me get this reconnected uh, on different wireless out here. And let's head inside and let's see how far we can overclock this. While we're out here, maybe you're wondering and haven't even seen like what is immersion? How is that working? So that is actually immersion oil, dielectric fluid. It's not actually water. And uh, the way it works is back here, you see these two black hoses back inside here. One is the hot oil coming, uh, per the top one, coming out of the tank and the bottom one is the cold oil getting pumped back in. So the hot oil actually comes out and runs into this dry cooler here. This is made by fog hashing and it gets pumped in and it goes through kind of like your car through a radiator on the back side here. It gets cooled by the fans and the outside temperature and then gets pumped directly back inside into that tank, allowing you to pretty much cool your miners and kind of displace that heat through the oil as well as run them completely silently. All right, let's sit inside. All right, while we're waiting for that to get up and mining and we can kind of set a baseline and then get started with our overclocking fun, huge shout out once again to the team over at plebsource.com for not only providing their NerdX Q++ for today's video and review, but also the giveaway. Don't forget, get in on that giveaway. So we're over on their site here. I want to show you a little bit about the miner and then we'll go ahead and jump over to the configuration screen. So I previously did a video on the Bitax Gamma from the team over at Pleb Source. Works amazing. That's the one that we did see here at the top of the video. They do have the model in right now. If you guys are interested in getting this, I'll put a link down below as well as a discount code if you're interested in picking one of these up. Here is the NerdQ Axe Plus Plus 4.5 terahash. And I would honestly say it does do exactly as advertised. And we did see that at the very top of this, right around 88 watts. Now, it doesn't come with the power supply, as I talked about, so I'll link that down below as well. It's an Amazon link, so it makes it easy no matter where you're located. So, comes in around $600. So it's definitely much, you know, it's a lot pricier than what we had with the Binax Gamma, around $150, $155 for sure, but like, this thing is sweet. I can only imagine how far they do take these. Are we gonna see a next beefier model? You know, we'll definitely have to wait and see. So jumping over here, we're over on the dashboard for our miner and we're at about 4.9 right now. If we take a look at system, we've been up and running for about 12 minutes. Definitely takes just over 10 minutes to get this up and mining fully to the full hash rate that we would expect. So when we jump over to settings here, and we scroll down on the far right hand side, we have that button for the danger zone, as we talked about. Selecting that, we now have the option to change the frequency and the core voltage. So where my thought is, is I'm gonna spend a little bit of time here of kind of tweaking this and bumping this up and I won't bore you with all of it, but I'll return back with kind of my final results on this model. All right, so it's been several hours and we got a ton of testing done, but I think I ended up landing on as far as we can take it today. So let me go ahead and show you. So we're over on the Nerdax dashboard here. We're at about 5.5, but we were able to get up to six terahash with this model. You can actually, you might be able to see across the board here. We were upwards of about six and we've been testing all different frequencies, all different core voltages, 
and we kind of ran into a brick wall, you know, as far as that we could take it. And you might be like, well, why? Like kind of what happened? Well, when we jump over to settings and we scroll down to our frequencies, right about 730, 735 on our frequency and our core voltage about 1170. That's keeping us right around about 100 to 105 watts. And we're getting up there of, on average, we see about 5.8 to 6 giga hash, which is awesome. 6 giga hash, 103 to 105 watts is fantastic. But the downside is that we're actually, you know, a few things. First off, the temps are awesome. Look at this, 34.9 Celsius. I took a look at some other people out there. Um, huge shout out to Sterling over on YouTube. I'll leave a link down below. He has a great video on the Nerd QX and overclocking. He ran into some similar issues where he actually ended up being limited by the power supply. But when I was tracking along, his temps were really getting up there, like 68C around the same settings that I'm at. And I'm at 34.6. So like immersion's doing the job of keeping the Nerd QX nice and cool. So that's not an issue. I don't think the chips are limited at all. Everything I could find was that the power supply was actually limiting how far I could push this. And it was fantastic not to worry about cooling. Now I have, this is the power supply that I'm using uh, that I linked down below. And this is great, but it's only rated for about up to 120 watts. And I did push it past there. We went well over it to about 130, 133 watts. And I was like, eh, we don't want to smoke a power supply. So I did start looking at other options out there of, you know, th there's ones out there of 200 watts, 360 watts and farther. So I think I'm going to go ahead and order a beefier power supply. I mean, we could go nuts and take this even further, uh, but I want to go ahead and get a heavier duty or power supply and see in a future video how far we can push this because I still think, I still think there's more gas left in the engine with the Nerd Q Axe. I, I think we could go farther. I think we could get maybe six and a half, maybe seven total Terra hash. We'll definitely have to see. That was a lot of fun. If you guys are interested in the Nerd Q Axe Plus Plus from the team over at Plebsource, go over and check them out via the link directly down below. And don't forget to go ahead and snag that discount code. That's going to wrap things up for today, guys. Have a good one.